Welcome to Excel Basics number 9. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Basics. Hey, in this video, we want to talk more about cell references, and in specific, talk about mixed cell references. Now, uh, just like in the last video, we had a table, and all we have 144 cells right here that need the same formula. And this is a multiplication example, and this is just a great way to learn how to do mixed cell references. Mixed cell references give a lot of people trouble, including me when I learned them. It took me months and before I really had mixed cell references under my belt. And every uh, couple weeks when I got into trouble, I just redo this example here to remind me how mixed cell references worked. Now. We know how a multiplication table like this works. If we're in this cell right here, we need to say equals 7 times 5, and then control enter, that's 35. When we're over here, we need equals whatever the um, cell at the top of this column is times whatever the cell at the beginning of this row is. All right. I'm going to delete, and I'm going to highlight, just as we did in the last video, we're going to highlight the whole entire range of cells. Because the same formula is going into all 144 cells, there's no need to create it and then copy it down and over. Just highlight it up front. And then when you're done, control enter, and it will populate all the cells. Now I'm going to make this real big so we can uh, see how this works. All right, so the active cell is always important when you highlight a range of cells like that. The light colored cell is the one where you have to build the formula. So I'm going to say equals this uh, cell at the top of the column times the cell at the beginning of this row. Now here's the trick. You always got to start, for our formula only has two cell references. But however many cell references you have, you start with the first one, you ask two questions and answer them, and then move to the next one. Ask two questions, answer them, and then move to the next one. If you had uh, 10 cell references, you'd have to ask the same two questions about each cell reference. Here it is, question number one, to, to determine what type of cell reference this has to be. Now, let's just remind ourselves the F4 key, if I hit the F4 key and my cursor's touching a cell reference, it'll add two dollar signs, column, and row reference. When I hit it again a second time, it's just in front of the row reference. When I hit it a third time, it's just in front of the column reference. When I hit it again, it's back to relative. Relative, absolute. Now, here's the two questions. When I'm copying this formula down, what do we want B2 to do? Do we want it to move relatively, which is one above? Or do we want it to be locked? So as it goes down across the rows here, it needs to be locked on this B2. Well, the answer is we want it locked going down. So I'm going to put my cursor here and hit the F4 key so that there's a dollar sign just in front of the row reference. Notice, copy formula down, and it needs to be locked. The number is the row reference, so the dollar sign has to be in front of the number. That's question number one. What do you want to do when it's you're copying up and down? Now, what about when we go to the next column and the next column here? Do we want it locked on the number one, or do we want it to move relatively one above? Yeah, when I get over here, I want it looking at the three, not the one. So no dollar sign in front of the column reference. Now, we've answered our two questions. Let's go on to the next cell reference and ask the first of the two questions. Hey, what do we want this cell reference to do when we copy it down? One, two, three, four. Do we want it to be locked on this A3, or do we want it to move relatively one to my left? Yeah, we want it to move relatively. So when it comes down uh, to right here, it's looking one to my left. So no dollar signs in front of the uh, three, the number, the row reference. Now let's ask the second question. What do you want it to do? to the cell reference to do when you copy it across the columns. Do we need it locked on the A3 or do we want it always one cell to my left? Yeah, we need to lock it here. So because we're copying it across columns, and that really is the key, it's the direction you're copying 
that determines where the dollar sign goes. So look, I always put my finger, or sometimes I still do this when I get a big form, that's just to remind myself, oh yeah, I'm going across the letter, so the dollar sign has to be in front of the letter. F4, F4, F4. Now that's it. We've answered both questions about both cell references. Now we can hold control and tap Enter. Now, whenever you um, enter a bunch of formulas like that, or even copy them, you always have to go to the diagonally furthest one away, because it's a, it's a table of, of numbers. Click in this cell and hit the, F4, or the uh, F2 the key, which is the edit key. Sure enough, it got it just right. The 12 up there has got the blue one, and the uh, 12 there has got the green one. So it worked beautifully. All right, uh, don't forget this trick as you're learning cell references. And uh, don't forget, don't be lulled. Most people say, I never need those. But all, all the amazing advanced tricks for array formulas and conditional formatting and uh, advanced filter data extracts, a lot of those tricks rely on the fact that you really know all four cell references, relative, absolute, this one here is a mixed with the column locked, and this one is a, row, a mixed cell reference with the row locked. All right, we'll see you next basic video. Remember, as always, if you want to download the workbooks, go to the Excel is Fun channel, and then scroll down here on the left, and sure enough, there's a link right there. And these have uh, the workbook downloads Excel basics. You can even go uh, download my book. It's 144 pages and then print it out. And there's all the other links for the workbooks. Is the address right there.